Hey, before we jump into today's story, be sure you never miss another episode of 10 Minute Murder. To do that, all you have to do is follow the podcast on whatever app you're listening right now. It might say subscribe, follow, or collect, something like that. It depends on where you're listening. But hit that button and be a part of everything we're doing here. 10 Minute Murder contains depictions of actual crimes. What you are about to hear is real and violent in nature. Discretion is advised. This is 10 Minute Murder. Welcome to 10 Minute Murder, the brief and bingeable true crime podcast. I'm Joe, the host, and thank you for being here. Quickly before we get started, let me let you know that right outside the door of my little studio here where I where I do this, um, that's where Harper, my dog, eats her food. And I walked in here and started doing this without realizing that I didn't shut the door, which means she can come in and out as she pleases, which is fine with me. But she's out there and she's chosen now as the time to eat her dinner. And she's a loud eater. She's a smacker. So um, if you hear like loud noises in the background, Harper's having dinner. So we're all going to try to ignore that. Anyway, cool. I'm glad you're here. And a reminder, if you want to send me stories, you can email them to me. 10minutemurder at gmail.com. It's quick. It's easy. And if you're connected to 10 Minute Murder on social media, you can also send me uh, stories there too. And she just came and put her slobbery, gross mouth on my leg. So that's fantastic. Yeah, I'm talking about you. I wonder if I can reach the microphone to hear her eating her food. Her big chomps. She saw the microphone and decided to sniff it. All right, let's get to today's story. We're talking about a killer that involves cannibalism yet again. I don't know why you guys keep sending me these gross ones, but here we are. And this one is extra gross, so heads up. Joe Metheny. He confessed to killing 10 people in the Baltimore area. He says he felt compelled to strangle some of the women to death after just casually hanging out with them. And spoiler alert, he wasn't convicted of murdering 10 women, just a couple of them but he was known to use pieces of his victims in a pork and person sandwich that he sold to other people. Joe Metheny lived from March of 1955 to August 2017 and was from Baltimore. He suffered abuse by neglect when he was growing up and had an alcoholic for a father. When Joe was seven, his father died in a car accident, and his mother often worked double shifts to make ends meet, to provide for her six kids, and in doing that, left them alone for nearly the whole day. Joe said that pretty frequently she'd send some of the kids off to live with other family members in a foster-like arrangement. His mother strongly denied that claim and said that she did work hard to provide for them, and they were only somewhat poor, but they never had to live with other family. Her kids never went hungry, she said. And she also said that Joe Metheny was an above-average student, polite and kind. If he was neglected, it was his own fault. It was a pretty good home. I'm not sure you can blame neglect on a child, but okay. Joe joined the Army when he turned 18 and was sent to Vietnam. While there, it's possible that he became addicted to heroin, but that is not confirmed. His mother says that's where he became addicted but she also says that she doesn't remember him even going to Vietnam in the first place. In the 1990s, Joe went by the nickname Tiny. It was ironic and funny if you've ever seen him because he was absolutely not tiny. Well over six feet tall and 450 pounds. He was a real big dude, beefy, and he spent most of his time drifting from bars and makeshift homeless camps in South Baltimore. The money he did make, or get somehow, went to buy crack, heroin and liquor. His co-workers at the job where he had to, he was driving a truck and a forklift described him as intelligent, well-spoken and polite. He wasn't really. He was murdering people during this time. The next part is going to be a first for 10 minute murder. I'm normally able to find some sort of audio of a confession if the killer gave one or at least something for you to hear. But Tiny Joe Metheny did confess, but he wrote it all down. He didn't say it with mouth words. So I'm going to read his confession that he wrote 
And just so you know, it's pretty spicy. It's not written like a formal confession. It all started back in July of 1994. I was at work. I was a truck driver. I was working overtime this one night. Then I got off and went home as I always did. But when I opened the door and turned the light on, I noticed there was nothing there. My old lady had taken everything, including my son, and left me. Her leaving was not my problem, but she took my six-year-old son with her. She was a crack addict and a worthless piece of... I would have paid her to get out of my life. All she had to do was take my son over my mother's house and she could have had everything else and be gone. I found out about six months later that she had moved to the other side of town with some a-hole that had her selling her butt for drugs. They got busted for drugs and they took my son away from them for child neglect and child abuse. I had no chance of going to social services and trying to get my son back due to my past criminal record. So I took it upon myself with the hatred I had for these two who lost my son to go looking for them. I had found out from someone that they was going under the bridge and getting high with some homeless MFers who lived under that bridge. I went under there looking for them. They were not there, but the two homeless MFers they got high with were down there. They were passed out on some old stinking mattress, and that's where they were when I left them, except they were dead from being chopped up. That same night, I lured the first crack whore down under that bridge. I got her high, and I was trying to get information out of her about my old lady's whereabouts. She acted like she didn't know, so I beat the hell out of her and raped her and killed her. I put her in some bushes and went and lured the second down there. I did the same to her as the last one, but as I was about to throw her in the bushes with the other one, I noticed an old black man down by the river fishing, looking back up at me. I grabbed a steel pipe that was laying by and ran down on him and laid his head wide open. So I put the two girls and him in the river and weighed them down with rocks. That was a very busy night for me, five murders within about seven hours. I washed up in that river and cleaned up the crime scene as much as I could, then left. Two and a half weeks later, I was arrested and charged with the murders of the two men I chopped up. I spent close to 18 months in Baltimore City Jail waiting to go to trial. The trial lasted one week, and it was thrown out of the court because of lack of evidence. I was free again. I went back and talked my old boss into giving me my job back at the pallet company. There was a little trailer on the property, so I told my boss to let me stay there and I'd keep an eye on the place. He agreed to this and gave me the keys to the front gate and the main building. The company was on a dead-end road and was very isolated. It was perfect for what I wanted to do. I lured two more crack whores up to my trailer. I killed and butchered their bodies up. I cut the meat up and put it in some Tupperware bowls, then put it in the freezer. I buried the remains in several shallow graves in little woods behind the company. Over the next couple weeks on the weekends, I opened up a little open pit beef stand. I had real roast beef and pork sandwiches, and why not? They were very good. The human body tastes was very similar to pork. If you mix it together, no one can tell the difference. Everything was going pretty good until I ran out of my special meat, so I lured another up to my trailer. I got her in there and started to rip her clothes off. She was screaming, but there was no one around to hear her except me, and I just kept on laughing at her. I turned around for a split second, and that was my mistake. She ran out for the door before I could get to her. There was an eight-foot chain-link fence with barbed wire on the top around the front of the company. There was a stack of wooden pallets next to the fence, about ten feet high. She scaled those pallets like a monkey and jumped the fence and ran down to the main road where some guy in a pickup truck picked her up and took her to a nearby gas station where they called the cops. Well, I knew the cops were on the way, but I didn't run. I gathered up her clothing, grabbed the keys to the gate, and went out and opened it. As soon as I stepped out the gate, a cop car pulled up, and the cop jumped out and pulled his gun on me and told me to get on the ground. And that is where it all came to an end. They took me down and booked me. She had told them that I was going to kill her like the rest, which was true. They had me sitting in a little room down at the homicide drilling me, trying to find out what I had done. They pulled me out of city jail every day for one month, taking me back and forth between the company and the bridge. I had them going crazy over at the company, digging up the remains of those two there, because I had their remains buried in seven different holes. The only thing I feel bad about in any of this is that I didn't get to murder the two MFers I was really after. And that's my ex-old lady and the bastard she hooked up with. Well, that's my story. Horrible but true. 
So the next time you're riding down the road and you happen to see an open pit beef stand that you've never seen before, make sure you think about this story before you take a bite of that sandwich. Sometimes you never know who you may be eating. Ha ha. So that's Joe Metheny's confession. During sentencing in 1998, where he was sentenced to death, but was later overturned to life sentences, he said that he committed murders because he enjoyed it. He got a rush out of it. No real excuse other than that. His rationale, in a nutshell, is why I do this podcast. To most everyone that knew this man, he was polite and intelligent. He could be your neighbor that you wave to while you go check the mail. He could be the guy on your street that's barbecuing and you yell over, Hey, that smells good. And he comes and brings you a plate. You have no idea. That pulled pork is people. I feel like not enough people are cautious with strangers. Be nice to random people, sure, but keep your guard up. Joe Metheny was found dead in his prison cell in the Western Correctional Institution in Maryland on August 5th, 2017. That's today's 10-minute murder, the brief and bingeable true crime podcast. Thanks for listening today. And if you have a story you'd like for me to cover, email it to 10minutemurder at gmail.com. Connect with me on social media. And by the way, on social media, I'll be posting a few photos of tiny Joe Metheny. He's, I think he's 6'1", 6'2", 450 pounds, something like that. It's, he's a big old guy. So connect with 10 Minute Murder on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And you can see those images. Lastly, if you're an Apple Podcast user, be sure to review and rate five stars. Doing that helps the show grow and reach more people. And plus, it's always nice to read kind words written by someone that appreciates the work of putting this thing together. Thank you for listening to 10 Minute Murder. Have a good night. <laughs> 